May is giving main character energy all month long. Tune into Galactic Gossip to find out who is the star of the show. Hey y'all, it's your girl Jasmine with House of Chiron and I am here to make the language of astrology digestible and accessible for all of y'all. I am not only a professional astrologer, but I am also a Reiki master and mental health professional. So if you are new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you will not miss me uploading any of these videos, any of the information that I share because there's a wealth of stuff that's up in here. Not in my hair, in my brain. <laughs> if you are returning, then hey, how y'all doing? Welcome back. Um, and with that said, you know, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right on into the month of May because we got some stuff popping off this month, okay? It seems to be, although it's retrogr retrogr retrograde season, clearly it's retrograde season, I can't speak. Um, although it's retrograde season, it's picking up again. We still have some optimistic and like high vibe type of energy going on. So with that being said, let's dive into it. This is going to be the forecast that covers the first part of May. So from May 1st until May 15th. All right, so diving in, we have real briefly, I want to talk about the Mercury Kazemi that happens on the very 1st of May. So the sun and Mercury are going to be coming into a conjunction, and we all know a conjunction is when the planets are together, same sign, same degree, or within the that nine degree orb, right? So if you want to know about like what I mean and all that kind of stuff, you need to sign up for my newsletter and download your free ebook it's a cheat sheet ebook and it gives you all of the language and the verbiage and the lingo okay so do that but anywho so the sun and mercury are going to be coming into a conjunction mercury is retrograde at 11 degrees taurus so the sun just recently entered into taurus so it's taurus season you know we feeling good feeling pleasure and all that good stuff and diving into eating more foods and thinking about agriculture and getting out in nature, you know, Taurus vibes, right? So um, a Kazemi is basically when the sun and Mercury comes together. The Mercury is at the seat of the sun. It's what they like to call it. So it kind of like amplifies <clears throat> the energy of Mercury. So Mercury is going to be, you know, getting more of what it already is where, you know, Mercury is about the mind and, you know, our thoughts, how we process information, how we speak and how we communicate, but Mercury is retrograde. So everything is internal and it's kind of like not operating as it normally should. So during this Mercury Kazemi, um, we're going to be getting sudden revelations about the Taurus things, right? So that's money, relationships, agriculture, earth. Um, we might have some sudden news or plans regarding our finances and partnerships, um, like I said, agriculture and the earth may be a strong focus in the world, especially on this day, right towards the end of April into the very beginning parts of May. OK, so I want to talk about that because, you know, I'm a Taurus rising. I have Venus and Taurus. I have my North Node and Taurus. I have Lilith and Taurus. I have all this Taurus energy. So I just want to talk about that. Anywho, so. We also have this full moon annular lunar eclipse at 14 degrees Scorpio that happens May the 5th. And it's going to be around in like 1230 in the afternoon central time. So first, let's talk about what is a annular lunar eclipse. It's a weird name, right? So basically, the annual, annular solar eclipse occurs as the, the new moon. So that's when the sun and the moon comes together, right, in a conjunction. Um, and the new moon is the, actually the moon moves in front of the sun during that conjunction. And so the sun is behind the moon, but it does not cover the, the sun's disk completely, right? So it creates that image of like the ring of fire. That's what this is, okay? And that's kind of how we can look at or experience this energy. <clears throat> so Scorpio is, in, is happening in the sign of Scorpio. So let's talk about what Scorpio is. Scorpio is considered, you know, it's a water sign. 
It's associated with transformation, intensity, depth, right? The full moon or a new moon um, in Scorpio is said to bring all of your emotions to the surface, especially those that have been repressed or even hidden. And when we have a conjunction, it indicates a new beginning. So this is a time where typically, you know, we'd be setting, you know, intentions and whatnot, but this is going to actually be a full moon, right? So with this being said, this full moon is about releasing those emotions, releasing in a way that's going to uh, let those repressed and hidden things come to the surface so that way we can, you know, do go through the transformation and the healing that's necessary. That's what the Scorpio energy is about. So this lunar eclipse is... Um, you know, it, it may amplify a lot of the emotions that we're having. It might actually bring them to a head. And also it might push um, certain individuals to confront their feelings and release what no longer serves them. So you might be faced with things that you did not want to face. Keep in mind that Scorpio also rules psychology. It rules our psyche. So this could be mental things, things that's going on really like hidden behind the scenes, ancestral things that are coming up, you know, releasing karma, uh, generational trauma. These are all those types of themes. Um, you might find yourself during this time, like really looking into psychotherapy, getting, you know, talking to a therapist, getting into counseling, things of that nature. It could also be very beneficial. Now, this is also <clears throat> indicating that something is ending, right? Because it's a full moon. Full moons are endings. They're releasing. It's letting something go. So it's wrapping up a cycle. And the cycle that's being wrapped up is whatever began around November of 2022. So six months ago under the Scorpio new moon eclipse. Okay. So um, additionally, with this uh, energy, Scorpio is... Um, like associated with not only, you know, transformation and intensity, but it's about power and control. And so this lunar eclipse may also bring about power struggles and conflicts, whether it's in relationships of, you know, intimate relationships, because that Scorpio energy is about intimate relationships and merging um, also within your resources, within your finances, because that is also very much so Scorpio rule themes, government uh, funding, government money, taxes and debts and things of that nature. So it might be bringing some of these things to the surface. Now, however, it can also be a time of major transformation and healing, right? So as we are being pushed to confront issues and make necessary changes, this is also going to be something that ultimately heals us later on down the road. Like we can, might we might not feel it right now. We might feel like the, the tenderness from this energy, but it's going to be like that purging energy of, okay, I feel a lot better. I don't feel as heavy. I feel lighter down the road, okay? Now, manifesting. Remember I told y'all a couple of weeks ago when we had um, the eclipse that happened in um, Aries. I said, it's not a great time to set your intentions. If you do so, cool, that's on you, whatever. Um, do what you want. I ain't gonna tell you what to do, but I'm gonna give you what I have and what I believe and what I know. So manifesting at that time was not necessarily the ideal time to do like setting intentions and manifesting and whatnot. And I would say wait, because you know that two weeks time from the last eclipse into now is almost over. So it's almost time for us to get back into manifesting and doing what we need to do and what not working with magic and all that good stuff. So um, I would say May 7th is a good time to start, you know, manifesting and getting back into your intention settings and things of that nature. Now, also, this eclipse is going to be making a couple of aspects. So one of which is going to be opposing Uranus, which is at 18 degrees, which is bringing shocking and surprising things up to the surface, unexpected changes that could bring like a radical release or maybe even, you know, a sense of freedom where you're just like letting things go. OK, also, it's going to be opposite Mercury, which is at eight degrees. Right. And so that's bringing news. Um also showing us where we need more planning and preparation in order to obtain what it is that we desire later on down the road. All right, so the last thing I'm going to discuss for this uh, forecast is going to be the Venus transit into Cancer. So Venus is leaving Gemini and it is entering into Cancer. So this happens on May 7th. It will be in the sign of Cancer until June the 5th. And during this time, you know, we might find that we are doing more of those Cancerian themes, right? Baking and being a homebody, focusing on home and family, um, enjoying your resting time, focusing on beautifying your home, you know, 
things of that nature. You might be, you know, getting new furniture or, you know, getting new drapes for your, you know, curtains or something like that, you know, redecorating. That also might be something that happens. Venus and Cancer is all about that. Um, if you have cancer placements, all of us will definitely be experiencing like being more charming and more attractive and all that kind of stuff, more nurturing, more so than anything. But if you have heavy cancer placements, especially like if you're a cancer rising, um, definitely charming, attractive and nurturing and very like alluring energy. That's how you're going to be showing up and being received during this next month or so with Venus being in cancer. All right. So with that being said, let's get into these readings for all 12 signs. But before we dive into these readings, I first want to remind you of a few things. Let's do some quick announcements. OK, so first and foremost, we have our um, Scorpio full moon eclipse energy that we are going to be doing a Reiki release under that happens on May the 5th. So make sure you are registered for that. Make sure you are signed up to secure your spot. Um, we also have the new moon that happens in Taurus, which is a beautiful new moon to set intentions and manifest, okay? You do not want to miss that new moon in Taurus energy. Um, we are going to be setting our intentions together. And also when you sign up, you can go ahead and get the astrology cheat sheet ebook and um, as well as you can purchase what comes with the purchase is the worksheet where you can understand your chart, know your rising, know all your planets, your placements, all the things, right? So you pair that with the cheat sheet ebook and the worksheet. You have a wonderful workbook that you can work in to understand yourself, understand your astrology. But these two events for the month of May, they are available on the website. So we have the Scorpio full moon Reiki release that happens on May the 5th. And then we have the Taurus new moon intention setting ceremony that happens on May 19th. Both are virtual events. They will be at 6 p.m. Central time. So hit that description box, book your spot. You do not want to miss any of these. That Scorpio energy is wonderful for releasing, wonderful for purging because that's what it's about. You know, Scorpio is about purging things that are toxic and that's what we need to do. Release, let it all go before we move into this new moon energy of Taurus, which is beautiful because it has Jupiter there. And I'll get into that in the next forecast. Okay. So with that being said, um, I believe that is all the announcements that I have. Besides, if you have not signed up for my newsletter, what you waiting for? You like me, you're here, you made it this far. Go sign up for my newsletter because they get what I don't give anyone else, okay? And then also you get like discounts and, you know, stuff that, you know, all kinds of stuff. You're exclusive, you're part of the fam, okay? So with that being said, um, let's get into these readings for the Scorpio full moon, okay? So starting off, uh, before we dive into this, I just want to remind you, make sure you are listening for your sun, moon, and your rising sign so you can get a well-rounded view of all of this energy and what it means for you. Okay, so your rising is going to be first and primary. It's the most accurate reading for your sign. And then your sun sign is secondary. It represents your focus, your goals, your career. Okay, and then last but not least will be your moon sign. That is going to be reflecting your home and family life, your current living situations, also your internal emotional world, okay? So with this full moon, starting off with Aries, sun, moon, and rising, um, it's happening in your eighth house, okay? So um, with it happening in your eighth house, you are releasing taxes and debts, or maybe you've been waiting on money from like a resource. It could be government money, and now you're receiving it. Um, you're also probably purging some old debts or purging some old ways that you've managed your money. Also, there could be an ending or a wrapping up of a cycle in an intimate relationship. Doesn't mean that your relationship is ending. For some areas, there will be relationships ending, but also there could be like an intimate relationship that's like wrapping up one cycle to embark on another cycle. Okay. So moving on. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. This Scorpio full moon eclipse is happening in your seventh house. And so this is the house of partnerships. This is the house of marriage and contracts and commitments. And it's also, you know, business partnerships. It also is the house that rules other people. So this could be you releasing, letting go, like wrapping up the ending of a phase of like a contract or some type of commitment um, that you've had previously. 
Also, it could be that this cycle is ending so you can embark on a new one, right? So um, maybe like the, the ending of like a relationship or um, revisiting like a contract, getting, especially with Mercury being retrograde in your sign, it could be that you're getting, you're revisiting a contract or revisiting commitments and letting what needs to be released, you're letting it go, okay? So for Gemini, sun, moon, and rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your sixth house. And this is the house of work and routines, your health. This has a lot to do with your employees and the people that you work with, as well as if you are a pet owner, if you have like a pet, a puppy or a cat or however, this is the house of pets. So this could be like the ending of that energy where um, you know, you're wrapping up a certain cycle when it comes to, you know, how you care for your pets or you're having to get rid of your pet or um, there's a, like just an ending of a cycle when it comes to your pet where you're having to show up differently or, you know, something is changing within that. Also, you know, with employees. So you could be, you know, releasing your job or uh, embarking on a new career path or just kind of wrapping up the ending cycle of like health issues that you've been experiencing. This could be the wrapping up of that, like releasing and purging any toxins, um, any unhealthy um, eating habits, you know, embarking on a new way of living. Okay. So for Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your fifth house of joy and fun. This is about children, creativity, romance, and dating, and your hobbies. Um, it's also about creative expression and your creative projects. So you could be releasing or launching a creative project during this time. You could also just be really like letting go of things that have inhibited you from having fun, right? And enjoying life um, and just kind of getting back into hobbies, learning something new, picking up a new skill um, when it comes to something creative. Like if you're into art or music or dancing or, you know, poetry, something along those lines. <clears throat> and it's something that you're doing possibly like behind the scenes that you're not necessarily expressing to anyone, but you're picking this up on your own. Um, also, you just might be finding new ways of, you know, just enjoying yourself. And if you have children, if children are relevant, um, then maybe you are releasing like the cycle or a certain cycle of, you know, how you interacted with your children and you're embarking on a new, you know, journey with that. So like maybe, you, you know, you've been like cooped up in the house, you know, summer is almost here. So it might be like the ending of, you know, being serious. And now it's like fun time with you and the kids. So that is all possible. <clears throat> All right, so for Leo, sun, moon, and rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your fourth house of home, family, your living situations, real estate, feminine energy, the feminine influences in your life. This is about your traditions and your roots. This is the uh, house that rules um, not just your home, but just what makes you comfortable, right? So with this being that you might be letting go of a home, you might be looking to move, you might be wrapping up a cycle in like certain things that have brought insecurities, um, you know, coming to some type of revelation when it pertains to your home, but also maybe your roots, your family life. Um, you know, past life things, past like your lineage on maybe the matriarchal side of the family, that kind of energy as well. Um, also, like I said, it might be um, letting something go or ending a cycle when it comes to your home. So maybe uh, renovations are coming to a close during this time, or you could be looking to move or you're, you know, moving from, you know, one place to another, like the cycle is ending being in this location and you're moving to another location that is all possible. Okay, so for Virgo, sun, moon, and rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your third house. And this is a house that rules, you know, transportation and, um, you know, it's, it's transportation, but it's also like small business, it's education. So it's like lower level education, like skills and trades, you know, education, like if you're in like school or however, um, not higher education, but it still is like that learning aspect. Um also, you know, like I said, small business is your your neighborhood, your environment, your immediate environment is also transportation. So you might be letting go of a vehicle or you might be doing some renovations on your car, like getting some maintenance done or however. Also, this could be that you're launching a new business. Um, you could be, you know, putting it out to the public. You could be releasing something um, small business wise, um, something you've been working on behind the scenes for quite some time, something that you initiated, you know, like like I said, back six months ago in November. Um, also, um, this could be, you know, 
showing up differently or being seen differently within your neighborhood, your neighbors, you know, interacting with your neighbors a little bit differently. Um, also, this might be something with siblings where you're ending like a certain relationship or a certain dynamic with how you interact with your siblings as well. Okay, so for Libra, sun, moon, and rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your second house. And this is the house of income that you make for yourself. It's also about, you know, pleasure and food and, um, you know, your possessions and relationships as well. So with the second house energy, it's like maybe you are releasing um, any kind of toxic way you have been showing up with, you know, your partnerships um, or how you make money or how you manage your money. Maybe letting go of certain possessions, letting go of certain things that are really like holding you back, keeping you in debt, not allowing you to grow. Um, it could also be possessions in the, you know, everything that you possess, mindsets, habits, uh, values, certain things that are just no longer in alignment with who it is that you are or your value system. You're just needing to let it go. And it also could be people. Okay. So keep that in mind, Libra. All right. So for Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising, this is happening in your first house. So it's directly affecting you, Scorpio. Um, you are releasing any insecurities, anything that has held you back from being your most truest, authentic self, showing up as who you are. Um, you are also going through a major change and transformation in your body. You're changing, um, you know, how you show up, how you see yourself, how you feel about yourself, how you initiate things, your sense of confidence and courageousness. Like all of these things are changing within you as well as like your physical body could be changing. Okay. So for Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising, this Scorpio full moon is happening in your 12th house, okay? So this is the house of things that are hidden, things that are, are, that are unseen. So the 12th house also is about creativity. It's um, about the interconnectedness that you have with other people, you know, like in relationships where there's intimate platonic, however, um, just people that you actually care about, right? The 12th house is typically ruled, you know, it's a Piscean, Neptune kind of vibe. So it's like, you know, unconditional love and compassion and whatnot, but it's also creativity. It's also healing. It's also things that happen behind the scenes, like in asylums and hospitals and retreats. So you might find yourself that you are ending a cycle of, you know, mental health has been a focus for you. And maybe you're ending this cycle, something that you were initiated, uh, initiating back in November. It could also be like a creative thing that you were doing. Maybe you were on a retreat or maybe you took a sabbatical from things. Maybe you were just really focused inward and you've been on, you know, focusing on yourself on an internal level. And so now it's like you're releasing and you're coming out. This is like the wrapping up of that cycle. Maybe you've gone through some extensive healing or you've been hospitalized or you've even been taking care of a loved one who has been, you know, physically ill or however and so now this is like wrapping up the ending of that so you can like embark on a new journey all right so for Capricorn sun moon and rising this energy this full moon the Scorpio full moon is happening in your 11th house and this is the house of your hopes and wishes your your material gains and this is also the house of friends and networking um you know things that you want to achieve in life right the overall vision that you have and so you might be releasing launching or letting certain things go when it comes to certain um aspirations that you have because you recognize that they're not in alignment with who it is that you are what you really truly want for your life they don't align to your vision when you see what you want Want, you know it does it's just not there um also it could be like the ending of you know certain friendships that are just kind of shallow they're not they're not uh happening at the depth that you necessarily need um also this could be that you are releasing certain assets um material gains things that you have acquired you're letting them go because they're holding you back or keeping you in debt things of that nature um also this could be the ending of a cycle when it comes to your friendships and how you interact with other people but also your sense of freedom and your autonomy and how you move about you know the world and just being who it is that you are Okay, so Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. This Scorpio full moon is happening in your 10th house, and this is the house of career, your public image, your public reputation, your social status. So this has a lot to do with your career. So you might be wrapping up the ending of a cycle in your career where you're like ending something. You're like, okay, I'm done with this job. I'm going to move on into something that's like my passion project. I'm going to be doing this, whether it's a small business or you're just moving into a brand new career. You could be getting a raise at this time. If you're happy in your career, you could just be moving up. Um, 
you know, being seen from someone that's in a position of authority, uh, being recognized on a larger scale for the work that you do, the benefits that you have and the things that you bring to the table. Also, your responsibilities are changing. The responsibilities you have to the world are changing during this time. And you're just releasing that old aspect of who it is that you were and career-wise and who it is that you were and how people see you on the public front. And now you're moving into something a little different, okay? So Pisces, sun, moon, and rising. Last but not least, let's get to you. So this is happening in your ninth house. And this is the house of higher education and travels, like right? long distance journeys. And this is also the house that represents, um, you know, your beliefs and your philosophies, mentorship, and, you know, your, your vision for life, right? Your life path, things that you're supposed to be doing, like you're destined to be doing. It's your journey, your life's journey. Um, also, this is the house that represents um, like uh, teachers and philosophers and things of that nature. So he might be wrapping up the ending of a cycle when it comes to like school and education. Maybe you've been in school. So like the semester is ending. And so, you know, you're done and you're going to or you're you're graduating or you're just done for this time. It's going to pick back up. However, also, you might be um, embarking on or receive an opportunity to travel um, or, you know, going to visit someone that's at a distance from you or hear back from someone that lives, you know, at a distance from you. Um, also, you might be planning to go on a trip, you know, maybe if it's not happening now, you could be planning on going on a trip, a vacation or something along those lines, or, you know, just experiencing education, but definitely releasing a certain aspect of who it is uh, that you are, uh, not necessarily who it is that you are, but just releasing something in your belief system, right? Something that does not align with who it is that you are, um, you know, reevaluating your beliefs, anything that is, you know, restrictive or anything of that nature that does not allow you to be free, uh, just reshaping and rethinking, reforming that thought process, right? You know, the school of thought that you have about your beliefs and your philosophies, you know, you could be embarking on something that's quite different moving forward, but also education and travel and just your life path and your journey is, is definitely wrapping up a cycle to embark on a new one. All right. So, that's all that I got. Okay, y'all. So I hope that this has been beneficial and helpful. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful first two weeks of May. The second two weeks of May, I will be putting that out before they actually hit and whatnot. But um, we have some good stuff coming. We have Jupiter moving into Taurus the second part of May. And, you know, Taurus is going to be heavy Taurus placements, y'all main character energy, okay? We got a lot going on in Taurus. Like, although Mercury is retrograde in Taurus, we got Jupiter there, Uranus is there, North Node is there. For a little bit, the sun is there, and then it moves into, you know, Gemini and whatnot, and it's going to be my season. But um, either way, either way, it's going to be um, a good rest of the month and whatnot. We have some tension, of course. There's going to be some things because we don't go without a little challenge. How, That's how we grow. So, but yeah, so real quick recap, um, make sure that you hit the description box for the events that are happening in the month of May. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter to get your free stuff that you deserve. You deserve free stuff, so go get it. Um, and what else I got? I think that's it. I'll see y'all in two weeks. Bye.